Life is a beautiful and unlikely gift. In fact, if we look around us at the planetary scale, Earth is the only planet hosting life that we know of. Now, there are many planets that we know exist, and for some of them we know that life isn't possible. However, for the majority of worlds whose existence has been confirmed, we simply haven't been able to tell whether life is present on their surfaces as well or not. This is where the James Webb Space Telescope comes into place, helping scientists find out more about these distant planets and whether they harbor life or not will be one fundamental mission for the Space Telescope. In today's video you will learn what three key ingredients the James Webb Space Telescope will help researchers identify in the atmospheres of distant exoplanets to determine whether life exists there or not. But before we get to that, another important question needs to be answered. Among the thousands of exoplanets that are known, how do scientists and researchers decide what planets are worth looking at when they search for signs of life? Well, there is one phenomenal detail that makes the presence of life on any planet much more likely. I am talking about the so-called habitable zone. This zone is what astronomers define as the right distance between a planet and its stars, so that the planet is neither too cold nor too hot for water to be able to remain in liquid form, given the right atmospheric pressure. Whether water is present on said planets or not is another question, but the fact that temperatures would allow for it to be there in liquid form is reason enough to have a look, since all living things that we know of need water to exist. And this is exactly the reason why scientists are so excited about the upcoming research on the TRAPPIST-1 system with the help of the James Webb Space Telescope. The TRAPPIST-1 system is a batch of seven Earth-sized planets rotating around a red dwarf star located about 40 light years away from us. All seven planets have the potential for water on their surface, although only three of them lie within the habitable zone, thus allowing for liquid water. The next step is to find out if and how many of these planets have an atmosphere, which is also crucial for water to remain on their surfaces. And this is where the James Webb Space Telescope will shine. Not only will it help identify if there are atmospheres present on these planets, but it will also be able to tell whether these atmospheres look anything like our own, that is, whether they contain certain gases that could indicate possible signs of life or what scientists call biosignatures. Now let's have a look at what three key atmospheric biosignatures scientists and especially astrobiologists are looking forward to finding. One of them is oxygen, which could be a telltale sign of life since it is produced by oxygenic photosynthesis, which we all know plants here on Earth produce, and not only plants, but also all sorts of microbes are also capable of doing oxygenic photosynthesis. Another key gas would be methane. Methane is also produced from microbial activity by the breakdown or decay of organic material. These microbes can be found in a wide variety of places here on Earth, from wetlands, landfills, and even in the guts of animals, including our own. Now, keep in mind that both oxygen and methane, even though they could represent strong signs of life, especially if found in combination, could also be false positives. For example, finding oxygen alone in a planet's atmosphere is not enough to tell for sure if it is a biosignature, since there is also the possibility that it was built up through non-biological processes. The last atmospheric biosignature I want to talk about in this video is carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide is an important atmospheric component of habitable worlds. It is a key ingredient for photosynthesis and it also plays a key role in climate regulation. Now, CO2 on its own isn't a particularly strong sign for determining the presence of life on a planet, since it can also appear from non-biological sources, such as volcanic eruptions or weathering. Furthermore, the atmospheres of Mars and Venus are mostly made up of carbon dioxide and still we haven't found life on these two planets. However, things can radically change if CO2 is found in combination with methane within the same atmosphere, especially then if carbon monoxide is missing. This is because many of the non-biological scenarios that create methane would also be expected to create carbon monoxide. 
But if the ladder isn't there, it could mean that it's been used by some type of surface life, such as microbes, which can live from carbon monoxide and water. Carbon dioxide and methane should be detectable in exoplanet spectra by the James Webb Space Telescope, particularly on planets orbiting red dwarfs. Now, as I mentioned before, even if these gases are found, scientists have to be careful about how they interpret these findings. For instance, it wouldn't make sense to label them as biosignatures if the planet in question lies outside the habitable zone. So I think it goes without saying that the process of identifying life on distant exoplanets is going to take a lot of trial and error error and above all a lot of effort and hard work. Now all of what I just told you relies on the assumption that life out there is also carbon based just like we know it. Although there could be other hypothetical types of biochemistries that are non-carbon based such as silicon biochemistry but that's a topic for another video. For now I'm gonna leave it here. I hope you enjoyed it and could learn a couple of new things. Thanks for tuning in and I will see you all in the next one very soon. Take care. Until then. Bye bye.